This is the actual specification for the vehicle location navigation system, the patent, that is available in our resources section. You can download that, download this Word doc. If we go to the end of this doc on about page 11, you can see that the claim section of this patent and of all patents is uh, located near the end of the patent application, near the end of the specification. It says what is claimed is, you see claim one, an apparatus comprising a connector, a wireless communication circuitry, a processor and a memory, and so forth. There are 17 claims in this spec. Track down here and we can show you. 17 claims. Go back to the top. Um, you can have 20 claims for the standard filing fee of which three may be independent claims and 20 total so the rest would be dependent claims and we will show you the difference shortly and there are some generalities that you need to know about the claims in your patent application before we get started drafting your claims the claims are the inventor's statements of what he or she believes to be the patentable subject matter of the invention and the claims in an issued patent are also the definition of what the inventor may assert to prevent others from making, using, or selling the invention in the jurisdiction issuing the patent, like for instance in the United States. The detailed description and the drawings teach what may be claimed, but only the claims define the meets and bounds of the invention as what is protected to the inventor. So the claims are super important in the patent application and in any issued patent. But the claims, as we have pointed out in just the previous session, may be completely changed after your case is filed. The drawings and detailed description cannot. Here is a rough timeline showing the time from when you conceive your invention to the day your patent issues. There are three distinct periods. Period A is the time to go through the 14 steps in the patent rights restored process to have your non-provisional patent application ready to file. The length of that period is entirely up to you. Uh, it can be very short, it can be rather long. Uh, period B is the time from filing until the patent office does its search and issues a first office action. This may be two years or more due to the huge backlog that the patent office has and can't seem to handle. Period C is the time in examination. This is the time that you will be dealing with the examiner to try to get your patent in shape to issue. And again, this is a variable time as well because one doesn't know in advance what art the, uh, the search is going to turn up and how the examiner is going to apply it and how you will have to deal with the art that is found and applied. Now the most important issues in period A are the drawings and the specification because these cannot be materially changed after you file. The claims can be changed at any time after you file up to and after examination begins. During step C, the claims are the focus of nearly all activity in the examination. So you don't have to have a perfect claim set to file. You can actually file with one paragraph in the claim section that is numbered and appears to be a claim. But before your patent is examined, you will want to have a complete and proper claim set to the best of your ability. But if you don't understand the claims in our process, you won't be able to do a good job in period B to improve your claims, so we will try to help you generate understanding here. It's just that you don't really have to apply all you learn before you file. But we highly recommend that you develop a claim set with your application and file it complete. The exercise will be very valuable as you go on. Now here are the most the types of claims that you may prepare to file, depending on the nature of your invention. There are apparatus claims. An apparatus is a thing with coordinating moving parts, a machine. You can write an article of manufacture claim. An article of manufacture has parts, but they're not coordinating moving parts. You can write a system claim. This may comprise several apparatus components. A method claim claims steps in a process. 
composition of matter claim claims composition of various components in a mixture. And you may have claims of different types in one application. It's, it's very common, for example, to have an apparatus claim and a method claim um, and dependent claims in a single application. Now we're going to show you the anatomy of each one of these types of claims relatively briefly just to get, get you to understand or, and be familiar uh, with, with how they're written. Um, and how they're composed. Uh, this is the uh, apparatus claim. We're going to use the folding wire caddy as an example. Every claim has a preamble and that is the very first statement uh, after the number of the claim that tells what it is. A lot of claims will simply start a method comprising or a system comprising or an apparatus comprising but we more often than not actually tell what the invention is in the preamble. So this one says the folding wire caddy comprising. Now the folding wire caddy has a number of distinct parts and each of these distinct parts becomes a limitation. We have one, two, three, four different parts uh, that are essential to the folding wire caddy. The base member, a first leg support member, a second leg support member, and one or more spindle members. The rest of the description of each one of these members describes how it relates to the other members and to the folding wire caddy as a whole. And the whole description then becomes the recitation of the invention uh, that we think um, may be new and not obvious. This is an anatomy of an article of manufacture claim. Again, as a preamble. Um, the fishing lure is not a, a device or an apparatus. It is an apparatus, but it's an article of manufacture sort of apparatus. So we use that as an example. Preamble says a fishing lure imitating a bird comprising. Could simply say a fishing lure. And it has the several parts, a cylindrical body, it has wings. This is the part that describes the bird's wings. This is the part that describes the bird's tail. And then we have a hook or a hook assembly. And the rest of this disclosure um, describes further uh, detail of each one of the parts and how the parts relate to one another in the article of manufacture. Now here's anatomy of a system claim, system claim for controlling a motorized track light system, it has a control unit, a plurality of stop sensors, a sensor activation magnet, a sensor for detecting ambient light, and this one has something a little different than you've seen yet. This has a characterization or a wherein clause which is a functional clause that tells you some more about the relative uh, interaction of the various parts with one another. So it would be good for you to read this and see how that ends up uh, finishing up the description of the system claim. Here's the anatomy of a method claim, a method for adapting a tra track lighting system for pre-planned stopping periods comprising steps A, B, C, D, E, and F. It's not absolutely necessary that you number or letter the various steps. Uh, some people do um, and we we often do this simply because in dependent claims and in, um, in the prosecution the examination process uh, it's good to have these uh, lettered or numbered so we can refer to them very clearly. This is the anatomy of a composition of matter claim. This is not a claim that we have in our uh, resources section but um, it's one that you can um, give you a, a clear idea of what a composition of matter is and how it's claimed. This was claiming a chromium nickel alloy comprising nickel and a certain amount, a window of amounts, chromium, tungsten, silicon, aluminum, rare earth metals, carbon in amounts, and wherein the alloy is beryllium free. So up to this point, we have tried to show you the different 
kinds of claims that there are, uh, article of manufacture apparatus uh, and these sorts of things, and the anatomy of claims, that every claim has a preamble and every claim has a, a fixed number of limitations, which may be the parts or the steps in the process in the claim. The whole point here is to try to get you familiar with claims, how claims are structured before you write your own claims. And once again, studying and following examples is absolutely necessary here. You can download all of the claims that we have just shown you in the, in the uh, section that we called anatomy of different claims. So you can have them in front of you and read them over and become familiar with them. And you can download uh, other patents and look at the claims in other patents. And the question then becomes, how many claims do I really have to look at and read? Well, that depends on how many is necessary for you to gain an understanding of how claims are done. Um, we can't really write the claims for you. We're hoping that you can do this yourself, and we expect that you can. We're quite sure that you can, but it is a matter of studying and following examples until the understanding is there. We're going to go on in further videos now and show you um, the difference between independent claims and dependent claims, how to write each, and uh, some exercises in actually drafting claims. Uh, which should you get, it should get you to the point that you need to be.